today's episode, the Philadelphia Phillies are still red hot. They take their series against the Los Angeles Dodgers. They have an interesting West Coast road trip upcoming that starts tonight. And also, with a month till the All-Star game, we're going to talk about some Philadelphia Phillies that could potentially be All-Stars this year. All of that on today's episode of Locked on Phillies. You are Locked on Phillies. Your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is indeed Locked On Phillies. I am Connor Thomas, your host. You've been hearing me for years talk Phillies baseball. You can hear me on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio, uh, NBC Sports Philadelphia on the television. Happy to be here with you as your host of Locked On Phillies. Thank you so much for checking us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and a fun episode set up for you today. Make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing on the YouTube, by the way, all that good stuff. You know what helps me out. I really appreciate that. It helps us all out here at Locked On. So if you enjoy the content, please find your way over to do that. It takes a couple seconds to, to do any of that and helps us out significantly. So thank you so much for that. But what also helps us out is when the Philadelphia Phillies play good winning baseball. And this weekend, they did just that. They went ahead and they won two of three from the Dodgers. Now, the Saturday game was ugly. 9 nothing loss. Cody Clemens pitched again. All right. We'll talk about that one as well. But uh, give a quick rundown of what went on in the Dodgers series and what I think went so right for the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, in the first game of the series, the Phillies won 5-4 to four on that Kyle Schwarber monster walk-off. Uh, and a great point. I forget who put out the tweet. Um, it might have been. Uh, Bob Wankel of Crossing Broad, who if you're in Philly, Crossing Broad, local sports outlet that uh, does some, um, not your typical old school journalism, but uh, more of the modern like type of reporting on the team, put out good like hype videos and memes and stuff like that. They're, they're a good follow, uh, like the folks over at Crossing Broad. But um, Bob Wankel, who works over at Crossing Broad, I believe had the tweet, said the only reason that Kyle Schwarber got up in the ninth inning uh, was because he was batting leadoff. So uh, keep that in mind. But yeah, in this game, I mean, Bryce Harper had an RBI single to right that uh, scored Kyle Schwarber in the bottom of the third. Nick Castellanos has been on fire. He had an RBI double. Uh, Kyle Schwarber scored again uh, on a wild pitch in the fifth inning, uh, and Nick Castellanos scored in the bottom of the fifth as well. It was 4-1. to one. And then Rob Thompson goes with Matt Strom. And Matt Strom did not have his best outing as a Philadelphia Philly. He goes one inning. He's allowed two hits, three earned runs, only strikes out two, walks one. Uh, and those were three of the four runs that the Dodgers scored in the uh, ball game. So Ranger Suarez had a great start. Six innings pitch, four hits, one earned, two walks, eight Ks. He's starting to really look like himself again, which is trouble for the rest of the NL East, the rest of the National League, and the rest of baseball in general. Because if Wheeler's going well and Suarez is going well and Tywin Walker, who we'll talk about in a little bit, is going well, the Philadelphia Phillies are in a really, really good spot. But Matt Strom had a rough outing. Uh, I get people being upset that uh, Rob Thompson decided to go to Matt Strom there with Alvarado available, with Soto available. My thing is the Phillies were up uh, at the time, 4-1, to one, and Matt Strom is probably one of your two most trusted relievers. Right now, I'd say your most trusted reliever is Jose Alvarado, now that he's healthy. I might put Strom above Kimbrel because Kimbrel still has those innings where it seems like he's on the verge of blow up. Matt Strom has been super solid this year, so I don't have any issue with the decision. It just wasn't the best outing for Matt Strom. Uh, ties up the ball game at four there in the uh, seventh. Uh, and then the Philadelphia Phillies in the ninth inning. There's two outs. I remember I was sitting with my buddies uh, over at their house. It was late. And we were about ready to go out to the bars and everything. We were sitting there. And the second out gets made. And we just go, oh, well, guess we're going to the tenth. And then you hear the walk-up music. And they announce Kyle Schwarber is hitting. It was I, I had just walked in. I had been out a little bit. And... Uh, I didn't know where they were at in the lineup. I, like I hadn't seen the past like two innings. I saw the strong blow up inning, and I didn't see the uh, rest of the seventh and the eighth. And and they announced Kyle Schwarber as the hitter, and we all look around my friend's living room. We're like, this might be over now. And sure enough, a Schwarber bomb to end it. He's been incredible in June. So darn good. Now the nine nothing loss uh, on Saturday because that was the four to five win uh, on Friday, which great great work. The 9 nothing loss was just, um, well, there's one way to put it, Aaron Nola stunk. Aaron Nola was bad again. You got bad Aaron Nola, and you can't get that against the Dodgers. He went six and a third innings, so we did eat some innings. But he gave up seven hits, six earned runs, 
walk to only struck out seven on 102 pitches. And uh, man, Jeff Hoffman was not better. He gave up three runs in his one third of an inning of work. Uh, they combined to let up all nine. And then Junior Marte, Dylan Covey, and Cody Clements closed everything else out. But it was just a bad Aaron Nola start. This is why I said on my Saturday show on 97.5 The Fanatic this weekend that Aaron Nola is not the most important pitcher to me the rest of the way because I can't count on him at all. So I'm just basically counting anything you get from him as a positive. But he's not. I'm not looking at Aaron Nola starts and saying, okay, that guy is time, like he can stop the bleeding. Oh, that guy can give you a good start in a big spot. Like I can't, if he does, I know he's capable of those things, but it's wrong in my mind to expect those of him at this point. I can't expect anything of Aaron Nola right now. He's been that bad lately. And I know he just almost threw away no hitter against the uh, Detroit Tigers. And then he goes out and he absolutely is terrible. I mean, uh, I, I can't figure it out. And the Tigers stink and the Dodgers are good. So part of that's the Tigers being bad. There was also a great start by Aaron Nola. The guy is Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. He's impossible to figure out. You can't really count on him. It's why the Phillies decided not to give him the money he was asking for this offseason. And Aaron Nola betting on himself didn't take the contract, and that doesn't seem to have worked out so far. Just a bad start from Nola there on Saturday. But Phillies had a chance for a bounce-back game on Sunday. Yesterday, they went 7-3. to three. Great win for the Philadelphia Phillies. The victory shirt is on today. More about the victory shirt a little bit later. But where this game started, of course, was a start by Taiwan Walker. He goes five innings of two hit ball, none earned, two walks, five Ks. He throws 83 pitches. Now, some people felt that uh, Rob Thompson went and got Taiwan Walker a little early. I mean, five innings pitched, only had given up two hits. You had five strikeouts and everything like that. Uh, at the time that he was pulled in the uh, with five innings uh, through, though it was only a three nothing game and i know you say only a three nothing game but the dodgers can erase that deficit quickly so i think rob thompson's thinking was that our starters have been more volatile than the bullpen the bullpen largely has been trustworthy but here's the flaw in the thinking right they're supposed to have a bullpen game tonight in Arizona. By the way, the Phillies take on the Arizona Diamondbacks tonight at 9:40 Eastern Standard Time over there in uh, Arizona. And you can listen to every pitch of the Phillies hometown radio broadcast on the Series XM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies. You'll be able to listen to that there. We're going to talk about that series coming up next segment. But you have a bullpen game. You need Gregory Soto, Sir Anthony Dominguez, Jose Alvarado, Craig Kimbrell available. And they all threw a full inning yesterday. So that's kind of annoying. I feel like you could have gotten one, maybe two more innings out of Taiwan Walker. Uh, but I also understand wanting to secure the win against the Dodgers in a winnable game and an opportunity where the game was not put away yet. So uh, I lean more towards you should have stuck with Walker. But I do kind of understand some of the reasoning behind why Rob Thompson would be thinking to pull Taiwan Walker there. So either way, great start from Taiwan Walker. He did his job. And the Phillies jumped on the Dodgers early. Bryce Harper had an RBI single to left field scoring Trey Turner in the first inning. Great Turner getting on scoring in the first inning is how you set the table. I mean, that's that's perfect. Then Bryce is not single to center field. Trey Turner scored again in the third, and Bryce Harper scored as well. Two RBI single by Bryce and Stott. And it was a weird kind of – both of those RBI hits were strange in that they looked like they might have been playable by Dodgers outfielders. They were just kind of dropping in right in front of them and that kind of awkward, do I lay out for it? Do I get it on one hop type of thing? Very strange, those those two, and how similar they were to each other. But doesn't matter, 3 nothing Phillies right off the bat. Uh, Freddie Freeman, who was unbelievable in the series, hit a home run in the sixth. Uh, but then Garrett Stubbs reached out one single. Garrett Stubbs leads either the National League or Major League Baseball. It might be all of baseball in bunt hits with four so far this year. He's unbelievable. Uh, Bryson Stott scored. Brandon Marsh got thrown out on another base running error. Classic, but 4-1. Cool. Then Jason Hayward hits a home run to make it 4-2. to two. And this is the point of the game where it's just like, okay, do the Dodgers claw back into this or in the bottom of the seventh do the Phillies answer? And guess who answers? Nick Castellanos hit a home run to center on the day that I-95 collapsed, uh, which, I mean, just par for the course for Nick Castellanos. Anything bad happens in his general vicinity, he's going to go yard. Uh, so Nick Castellanos hits a home run to uh, center field. Trey Turner scores. It's 6-2. to two. Game feels over. And then Cody Clemens hits an RBI single to make it 7-2. to two. Perfect. Max Monty gets one back in the eighth inning off Alvarado in a tricky spot with the bases loaded, but Alvarado works out of it, and the game ends 7-3. to three. And the Philadelphia Phillies have won seven of their last eight. Uh, they take a series against the Dodgers, 
And man, you got to feel good about how this team is playing right now. Like the pitching has been significantly better. The offense has come through a little bit. They're winning tight games. They're getting clutch hits. They're getting hits with runners in scoring position. The bullpen's big in big spots. I mean, everything's going right for this Phillies team. Reminds me of June last year when we realized just how high of a ceiling this team can have. This year's team, their ceiling's even higher than last year's team, mainly because of a guy named Trey Turner. And if he can figure it out and add that to this lineup, you're still good to go. So, hey, we'll look into uh, what they have coming up against a very good team in the Arizona Diamondbacks who are leading the Dodgers, who you just took two or three from, in the NL West. We'll talk about that coming up and uh, how the Philadelphia Phillies can uh, figure something out out there in Arizona where they haven't played all that well historically. We'll discuss as we continue Lock on Phillies. First, I want to tell you about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. One of the most annoying things in the world with cars is when you have an issue with it and you take it into, like, I don't know, take it to a mechanic shop or you work on it yourself. And the issue has gone for like three days and the next thing you know, I don't know, your brakes are squeaking again because either you didn't put the part in right or it wasn't the right part or this, that, and the other thing. No. eBay Motors has the eBay guaranteed fit so you can be sure. Like I said, every part you need fits just right. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time at all. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, let's discuss an upcoming series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Phillies come in with a chance to get to 500 tonight. They'll play the Diamondbacks 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Game 1. You can listen to every pitch of the Phillies' hometown radio broadcast of this matchup on the SiriusXM app. Just go to the SXM app, search Phillies, and you'll be able to pull that all up there. And the Phillies have four games out in Arizona. Tonight, they have even odds. So it's a 49.9% chance on the ESPN analytics for Arizona, 50.1% chance for the Philadelphia Phillies. Matt Strom is making a start for the Phillies. So anyone who didn't like Matt Strom's performance in the last time he uh, touched the mound, they gave up three runs. Uh, well, you're going to see him again tonight. I don't know how long his leash is, uh, probably just a couple of innings, but the numbers still look good. He's still got a 4-3 and three win loss record. He's got a 3-6-1 ERA and a 1-0-4 whip in 42 innings. He's been good this year. He had a bit of a blow-up inning, but he's a pitcher that you can kind of trust in this spot. And bullpen games are tough, especially against the offense that the Diamondbacks are trotting out. They're still hot right now. But uh, you're facing Tommy Henry, who's uh, he's 3-1 and one on the year, but a 4-3-7 ERA, uh, 27 strikeouts, 1.3 whip. So, He's got 27 strikeouts in, uh, let's just see, 45 and a third innings pitch. So he's not really a strikeout guy. Contact guy, about 6'3", lefty. So, you know, lefties are a little bit tougher for the Philadelphia Phillies when you see who's big in the Phillies lineup. But, man, it's an opportunity for the Philadelphia Phillies in this series because they play four games in Arizona, and you don't see Zach Gallen. Zach Gallen just pitched yesterday for the Arizona Diamondbacks against the Detroit Tigers. The Diamondbacks sweeping the Detroit Tigers. I mean, the Tigers are uh, – they might be the worst team in baseball, especially since Oakland has gone on a five-game winning streak. The, the Tigers might have a claim to be the worst team in baseball. But they also took uh, two from the Nationals with – the Diamondbacks we're talking about took two from the Nationals with one of those games postponed due to air quality, and they'll have a makeup date. But – Bottom line, Diamondbacks are on a five-game winning streak. Those have won seven of their last eight. Something's got to give, right? And uh, the Philadelphia Phillies have an opportunity to make that be the Diamondbacks' winning streak. Uh, a late-night game tonight, so make sure you stay up and watch it and uh, get a chance to go ahead and check everything out because it'll be an interesting one for a couple of the guys who are leaders in the clubhouse. Now, Kyle Schwarber's leading the Philadelphia Phillies in home runs. He's got 17. A uh, much more balanced uh, approach from the Diamondbacks, Corbin Carroll, only has 13 home runs to lead the Diamondbacks' offense, but their offense is just consistent up and down the lineup. Corbin Carroll's also batting 308. Like Kyle Schwarber's batting 171 with 17 home runs. Corbin Carroll's batting 308 with 13 home runs. Uh, Nick Castellanos, though, is batting 312 now. 
He's slashing 312, 358, and 498 to lead the Philadelphia Phillies in average. I mean, he's so good, and he's up to 38 RBIs, taking over the team lead from Alec Bohm. Of course, Bohm was out. He was on the 10-day injured list for a little bit there. He's come back. Uh, and everything had a bit of a rough offensive game yesterday in his return, but hopefully he'll bounce back in the series against Arizona. But Castellanos, 38, uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., uh, 39 RBIs for Arizona. And um, just talk a little bit about All-Stars, and we're going to get a little bit more into this later, but Nick Castellanos wants to be and I think deserves to be an All-Star in the National League in the outfield in the first poll that came out, or the first uh, vote reporting, I guess we'll call it. Uh, they had Lourdes Gurriel Jr. getting more votes than Nick Castellanos. He's one of the starters. So an opportunity in this uh, in this series for Castellanos to prove his worth as a uh, all-star in the National League for the second time in three seasons if they go ahead and get that squared away. But, yeah, I mean, tonight's game, uh, the biggest question is, can the Phillies' bullpen game be enough to hold down this offense of the Arizona Diamondbacks? The Diamondbacks are 40-25 and 25 in first place in the NL West. The Phillies are 32-33. and 33. They're trying to fight to get back to 500. Now, I think even if they struggle against the Diamondbacks in this series, and to me, struggling would be a split or winning one of three. Uh, no, no, the split's fine. You're, you're fine with a split in Arizona. Sorry, a struggle would be winning only one of three or worse than that. And we're not accepting a four game sweep at the hands of Arizona, uh, even though the Phillies have been really, really bad out in Arizona at Chase Field. They don't play well out there for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. They just don't love that building and they don't love playing this team. But, uh, as long as the Phillies take care of their business and win two out of four games, like that's fine. We're, we're good with that. But you got a real good opportunity here against the Arizona Diamondbacks to uh, not see Zach Gallen and get a chance. And this is a winnable first game, even though you're throwing a bullpen game. So to me, the biggest question about this first game is how much can you get out of the bullpen? And also, how good can each individual bullpen pitcher be? Because what you can't have happen, you can't have – the bullpen game go out there and have Strom give you like a third of an inning and get touched. And then all of a sudden, uh, I, I don't know, Dylan Kobe's throwing again. And then Alvarado's got it going. Soto and Brogdon and all of these guys have to throw. And then all of a sudden you're out of guys for a four-game series here with the Arizona Diamondbacks. I mean, you just look at the Philadelphia Phillies schedule this week. They'll play Arizona Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then – uh, they go ahead and they have a three-game set with the Oakland Athletics that starts on Friday. Saturday and Sunday, they're out there in Oakland. They don't get an off day until this uh, week from the day, next Monday. So you can't really be out of a bullpen for the entire West Coast road trip. They'll probably be able to survive it in Oakland because that team stinks, even though they're also on a five-game winning streak. But you can't lose those guys against the Arizona Diamondbacks tonight. So uh, that's my biggest focus, not just the bullpen game going well on the scoreboard, but the bullpen go game going well individually so these guys can be available or some of them can be available for another inning tomorrow, uh, an inning on Wednesday, stuff like that. Now, let's just look at the probable starters the rest of the way. Uh, Zach Wheeler is going to face Zach Davies in Game 2, the battle of the Zachs. Phillies currently have a little bit of an advantage in that one when you look at the ESPN analytics. Ranger Suarez is going to take the mound against Merrill Kelly, who's been incredible this year. He's got eight wins for the Diamondbacks. Merrill Kelly's been very good. But Suarez has kind of stepped back into it and had some good starts in a row. That's Game 3. Uh, so that's going to be a tough one to win. And then in Game 4, uh, Aaron Nola will take the mound. Who knows? Aaron Nola's a toss-up. He might throw a no-hitter. He might give up 20 runs in the first inning. He'll face Ryan Nelson, who's been – more of a middle of the uh, middle of the pack type of starter so far this year for the Diamondbacks, a gettable guy uh, who also has the ability to have a good start every once in a while for them. So the toughest game is going to be Game Three. Opportunities in the other three games for the Philadelphia Phillies, and even in Game Three where it's a tough matchup, it looks like on the mound. If Ranger Suarez goes out there and dices, you could be in good shape anyway. So uh, that's the opportunity for the Philadelphia Phillies against the Arizona Diamondbacks uh, again. One more time, that game tonight, first game of that series, is at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Philly's got a bullpen game. Need everybody tuned in to try and will them to victory. And you can listen to every pitch of the Phillies' hometown radio broadcast on the SiriusXM app. Just go ahead and search Phillies, uh, and you'll be able to go ahead and pull that up. Now, coming up as we wrap up, we're going to talk a little bit about just the initial all-star ballot results. These are just the initial ones and uh, where the Philadelphia Phillies stand. And we're also going to discuss – the shirt that I'm wearing today. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're going to want to tune in. Uh, we'll discuss that as we wrap up today's episode of Locked on Phillies. All right, let's start with the pertinent baseball information. So 
here are your vote leaders in the National League for the All-Star Game. I'm reading this off of Major League Baseball's graphic from a couple hours ago. They posted on their Instagram just the initial All-Star ballot results. So it's not locked in who's going to make the team. It's just where everyone's at currently. And currently, there are a total of, well, you can count them as we go through, number of Phillies that are currently leading. So it doesn't have pitchers on here. It has all the position players are what's listed. Currently catching for the National League, if the All-Star game was today, would be Sean Murphy of the Atlanta Braves. DHing, J.D. Martinez, Los Angeles Dodgers just saw him. Freddie Freeman, first base, uh, Los Angeles Dodgers also just saw him. Luis Arise at second base for the Miami Marlins. He's unbelievable. He's batting. Like, he might be over 400 still. Bottom line, he's the best hitter in baseball right now. Orlando Arcia for the Braves is playing shortstop. Uh, okay, get that. I mean, he's a solid shortstop. Trey Turner doesn't have any really claim with how slow he started. Nolan Arenado at third base. He's been really good despite the Cardinals' slow start. The outfield, Mookie Betts has an outfield spot. Ronald Acuna Jr. has an outfield spot. And uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., you're going to see tonight from the Arizona Diamondbacks. So let's just count it. There are two Braves, or sorry, three Braves right now, and three Dodgers out of the nine position players for the National League. Then a Cardinal in Nolan Arenado at third, a Marlin, Luis Arise at short, and a Diamondback in left field. Not a single Philly is leading a position. Uh, we don't know where the pitchers are. We don't know where the relievers are, but not a single Philly is leading a position for the all-star game right now, which would be annoying because I think this team's talented enough, but they just haven't started that well. I think when everything's all said and done, Nick Castellanos has a real good claim to be one of the outfield starters. Still a month to go, by the way. The game is until July 11th, uh, but he's got a chance. Bryson Stott's been good, but Luis arrives batting like 400. Stott could make it as a reserve, but he's not going to be the starter. Uh, JT Romito would need to be significantly better if he's going to catch. Um, trying to think. Alec Bohm, third base is just stacked up. I mean, Arenado's over there. Riley's over there down in Atlanta. Max Muncy's over there from the Dodgers. There's so many opportunities. There's just really not that many places where the Phillies have been better than the guys that are currently good in the National League. But the Phillies are still a very complete team when they play their best baseball. So we'll see who cracks in. I think Jose Alvarado has a chance as a reliever. I think Craig Kimbrell has a chance as a reliever. Um Maybe if Zach Wheeler continues to dominate for a month, he can make a case to be one of the starters. But uh, the starting rotation had such a slow start for the Philadelphia Phillies that I'd find that hard to believe. There's just not that many All Stars on that team on this team this year, and that doesn't mean the team has any shortcomings in total. Like I believe the Phillies had one, maybe two All Stars last year. I know Schwarber was definitely there, maybe Romito, and that might have been it. So you don't have to run up the score as having All Stars to be a great team just have to play good baseball down the stretch and we'll keep an eye on the the all-star voting as it comes but vote for your favorite phillies go ahead and jump on there and go ahead and get that done try and get some of our guys in the all-star game it's always fun to watch your boys play uh and speaking of fun i'm wearing the victory shirt again today uh, i just have a simple question can we say that the victory shirt didn't turn the season around because it kind of feels like it did i wore this shirt last sunday not yesterday but a week sent a week before yesterday the Phillies had just beaten the Nationals on Saturday. They had an opportunity to win the series on Sunday by going out there and taking the final game of the series. And I was going out day drinking. I said, let me wear my Phillies Hawaiian shirt that they gave away as a giveaway on Father's Day a couple years back. Wore it out. Got a couple compliments on the shirt. The Phillies won again. They'd won two. They had stopped a losing streak. And it was just like, okay, I'm just going to keep wearing the shirt and try and build a little bit of momentum. And then all of a sudden, they sweep the Tigers. And I'm wearing the shirt every day. If you're not familiar, this is the victory shirt. I wear it days after the Philadelphia Phillies win. I've worn it like, I guess, yes, yeah, seven times in the last eight days or whatever. And, and Well, they had an off day in there because of the smoke. But bottom line, I've been wearing it a lot. Uh, I'm wearing it again today. And I don't know that we can't say that the Phillies victory shirt that I'm wearing saved the season or not. It certainly has an effect on something because this team just doesn't lose since I've been wearing this victory shirt and I'm willing them to victory. If you haven't gotten a haircut in a while, you can't get a haircut. Like if you don't change your clothing style, uh, don't get a new car, keep everything the same because whatever we're doing right now is working for the Philadelphia Phillies. Maybe it's a little bit more of the players on the field playing much better, but I like to believe the shirt also has something to do with it. And you'll be seeing a lot of this shirt all year long after every single Phillies win, I'll have this shirt on. We're all going to get sick and tired of it, but as long as the Phillies win, Hey, if it's weird and it works, it still works. So uh, that's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Thank you so much for checking us out. Uh, fun game tonight with the Diamondbacks. Going to be a good one. Stay up late. Get your coffee in. 
a little West Coast baseball and an opportunity for the Phillies to go ahead and play a four-game series out in Arizona that they may actually have a chance to uh, win three or four on or at least split, and that's a good opportunity to keep the momentum rolling. And uh, it's a good time for the Philadelphia Phillies. We'll see how they can do. They've checked off a lot of boxes. They stopped the losing streak against the Nationals. They swept the team in the Tigers, who weren't very good. And people were saying, okay, well, you're beating bad teams. They go out and they win two or three from a good team. Now, next step is you got to go on the road and beat a good team in Arizona. So, hey, they're ramping up. It's getting tougher every time. But let's see if this team's up for the challenge tonight. I believe they are. And we'll discuss it either way on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Philly. So thank you for checking us out. Make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing, all that good stuff on the YouTube. And I will talk to you next time on the next episode of Locked on Phillies.